Here's the thing about herpes. <laughs> they sneak up on you like tiny inflamed ninjas. First, there's an unusual tingle in your jaw. Then there's a slight bump on your lip. And for half a day, you convince yourself that it's just a zit. But zits don't happen on your lip, do they? And then you see the small white pustules pop up one morning. You reach for the generic Valtrex, but it's too late. This little mouth gremlin is here to stay. I wish I had a sexy story about who gave me herpes simplex virus 1, a.k.a. cold sores. But I don't. I just have the story of Tina. <laughs> Tina was the first girl I ever slept with. She was the first girl to go down on me. She was the first girl I broke up with. But the very first first was Tina opening my eyes to the awesome power of sexting. I wanted a girlfriend, but I wasn't boyfriend material. I was best friend material, or like a brother to me material. I was the guy who'd ask to kiss girls at the end of the day. I heard all the greatest hits. I don't want to spoil what we have. You're not like the other guys. And my personal favorite, I just really need a friend right now. I was the ultimate sexless symbol in modern male sensitivity. And it sucked. <laughs> Tina was five feet two inches of sexual dynamite. Here was a girl who had given roadhead, had a favorite position, and owned a pair of handcuffs clad in leopard print to prevent chafing. <laughs> to me, she was the promise of sex to come, and I have been able to make her laugh, which then translated to some phone sex, and finally, my Motorola razor beeped at me, and there it was, a tight shot picture of her making a kissy face, wearing only a polka dot bra. What you think, the accompanying text said. Suddenly, my sensitive days were behind me. <laughs> what lay ahead were tangled bed sheets and a keen understanding of what the word engorged meant. <laughs> but I had to wait. It was Christmas 2007, and Tina lived in Northern California while I was visiting my folks in L.A. for the holidays. Here you go, son, my dad said as he handed me a pint of Guinness. Cheers. Our glasses clinked. We drank. I couldn't wait to text Tina or at least look at the picture again. The drunker I got, the more I convinced myself that I was a super stud. I texted her increasingly graphic and physically impossible descriptions of what I would do to her. But I was a virgin, so I just used a lot of animal imagery and hoped for the best. I also googled areola while I was at it, just for good measure. The next morning I woke up making hangover noises that were part moan, part yawn, part death rattle. I zombie walked my way to the bathroom and forced myself to shower. My jaw felt tighter than normal, like the muscles were overworked. I licked my lower lip and my tongue grazed two distinct hard bumps. Cold sores have actually nothing to do with having a cold. The virus pops up when the immune system is compromised. And when you drink with my family, your immune system is pretty fucked the next day. <laughs> the excuses started. Wow, my lips are really chapped, but only on these two small spots on my lower <laughs> lip. Weird, right? I had an inkling what it was. I checked WebMD and surmised that it had to be a cold sore or leprosy. <laughs> Tina texted me over breakfast. Hope you had fun with your family. I know I had fun with you last night. She followed it up with one of those little winky faces. <laughs> Very sexy, thanks, I responded. I'm sure she imagined my tone as a deep, rolling timber. <laughs> Can't wait for you to come back up here. I think you'll like your Christmas present. Another winky face. That sick joke ran through my head. Hey, what did you get your girlfriend for Christmas? Herpes. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. Should I text her back and say, even though I'm a virgin, I've managed to catch myself an STD? It was like a choose-your-own-adventure of social debilitation. <laughs> So I did the practical thing, ignored it completely. I bought presents for family, I saw friends from high school, and watched It's a Wonderful Life. 
Every time Jimmy Stewart kissed Donna Reed, I thought, must be nice, James. Must be nice. <laughs> Before bed, I do more research. Used to be if there was a glow coming from under my bedroom door, it'd mean I'd be clearing my browser history soon. <laughs> now it was medical articles and message boards. The debate seemed to be over whether cold sores are something you disclose to a potential partner. I knew I would tell Tina, mainly because I'd read a Safe Sex 101 pamphlet that told me I had to. I lived in fear of one of my friends seeing me, pointing at my little visitor and say, you got the herp, dog? <laughs> yes, dog. I got the herp. I got the mad herp, bro. As the days passed, the cold sore grew. It split, became infected, and I finally woke up to a charming yellow crust around my beard. In the waiting room of the walk-in clinic, I started to mentally prepare myself for the lifetime of rejection I was sure to face. Here's the thing about fearing you're going to die alone. You get really good at being single. I kept thinking about, I kept thinking about Tina, how I was sure I wouldn't fuck this up. I had played my cards right. Aloof, but not jerky. Flirty, but not cheesy. And now this fucking thing was going to ruin everything. All of my anxiety was poured into this dime-sized inflammation on my face. It became proof positive that I would never aspire to girlfriend heaven. I'd wallow forever in supportive BFF purgatory. <laughs> the doctor called me in. What seems to be the problem, he said without looking up from his clipboard. Well, I think I got this thing on my lip. It might be, is it? Or Yeah, that's a cold sore. <laughs> a wave washed over me. In five nonchalant words, this guy had totally destroyed any possibility of me ever having a real relationship. Desperately, I looked at him. Or? <laughs> it's just a cold sore, he said. A lot of people get them. Well, how long do they usually stick around? And then he did something that inspired a ton of confidence. He took out his iPhone, hit a few buttons, and soon he was reading off the exact same WebMD page <laughs> that I had committed to memory. Uh, let's see here. About a week, looks like. It's not just a cold sore. It's goddamn herpes simplex virus 1. I was now a carrier of a disease. I wouldn't be able to use the same towel for my face as I do for the rest of my body. I'd have to stop people from sipping from my cups with some ex lame excuse like, oh, I'm just getting over a really bad cough. I'd have to abstain from every game of spin the bottle. He sent me with a prescription, and as I left, the nurse at the front desk said, happy holidays. What did you say? I asked sharply. Happy holidays, she said again. I didn't respond and pushed my way out into the winter dusk. I was sure, sure, that she had said, herpy holidays. <laughs> at, the at the right aid, Christmas carols played in infinite loop as I decided it was time to resign myself to my preordained life of celibacy. I texted Tina. Hey, so I just went to the doctor. This is really embarrassing, but I found out that I have a cold sore. I hit send and my blood pressure skyrocketed. I stared at my phone, waiting for that little tritone that would signify receipt of a new text message. Einstein's theory of relativity came into stark clarity as minutes slowed and my entire future came clear. A lonely man dying under an avalanche of Trader Joe's TV dinners. <laughs> By the time I heard the little beeps, I had accepted my life of masturbation and hobbies like pinball machine maintenance. Oh, that sucks, with an X. So you never told me when you're coming back up here. I've got something for you. This was followed by, holy goddamn shit, another fucking winky face. <laughs> the morning of December 24th, I took the first of two very large pills. I texted Tina, told her I'd be up shortly after the new year. My dad approached me and handed me a beer. I told him it wasn't a good idea for me to drink. Why? It's Christmas Eve. I have a cold sore, I said with a little trepidation. He studied my face. Oh, yeah, I get them too. You know how in mystery movies there's always that scene towards the end where everything snaps into place for the detective 
usually in a montage of some sort, and he knows who did it. I had that, except it was a flurry of images. All of the times I had cheers with my dad, stolen a mouthful of his beer, done from the bottle shots with him, the joke changed. Hey, what did your dad get you for Christmas? Herpes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Rory Kelly.